I am Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my, my name. name. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good dusk. Whenever you are watching, it is always the perfect time. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. It is an honor to bring to you today my special guest from Los Angeles. Amazing guest. I know we're going to learn a lot today. Comfort killers. Ellen Lynn. Ellen Lynn is with me today. She is a seven-figure entrepreneur, author, and a bilingual e-commerce coach who has coached over 170 clients from 10 countries based on her success of building a million dollar online store with 600, yeah, you heard it right, $600 in four years. In the back end, in the back office, we were just speaking and she said if she tried harder in the first two years, it could have happened much faster than it did. But I'm so happy to have you join us in, on the Comfort Killers today, Ellen. How you feeling? Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you for um, Stacy inviting me to this uh, to this show, to this podcast, to this interview. I'm very pleasure to uh, speak with you guys about uh, how I build a million dollar business with only uh, six hundred dollars, and I have an update to make. I have over two fifty clients up to date now. So you, you jumped up from 170 to 250. Wow. Yes. So we, we got the old news here. You're yes. always growing. Yes, yes. Every day, every single day. No, well, thank you for, for joining us. Well, the first thing that, that pops out immediately uh, for our listeners and immediately for me was the $600 piece. And I know it was 2011. Even the internet isn't where it is now. Um, right. So you had less uh, technology to go with, still a lot of technology, still the internet, but $600, you know, first of all, what were you doing then? Who was the Ellen Lynn then? And um, how did you end up getting into e-commerce? Yeah, that's a very good question. So in 2000, and I, was, I was a video game artist before I started this whole entrepreneurship. I do, I do the uh, 3D background, 3D modeling for the video games, like uh, Wii or PS, those kind of stuff. And that was my whole passion. That, I thought that was, that was my passion for my whole life. But not until I got laid off in 2009 when the economy crashed like crazy. So I couldn't, I couldn't find a job immediately back then. So I just started like, uh, exploring around, start to teach people how to do 3D art, and start to help my dad's business. And finally, um, after, two, after two years, in 2011, finally came up with the idea of selling online. Because back in that, during that time, there's a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of friends around me are doing the same thing. So, well, I didn't, back then, I didn't think it would become a million dollar business at all. I thought it was just gonna be a really small business, starting from my garage, so here's what I did. Just uh, I flew. I flew back to uh, to Asia. I'm originally from Taiwan, by the way. Mm -hmm. Flew back to Asia. Just pick a few products, put everything in the luggage, and spend six hundred dollars USD dollars for those products. And then I flew back to uh, to Los Angeles and start selling them online. But it was a it was a leisure trip, so it wasn't really a business trip. So don't consider that the air ticket is part of that. Yeah. No, no, no. Makes sense. Yeah. No, so I mean, okay, so you got six hundred dollars, you were laid off, that's the catalyst here. And you were unable to find another job in your industry, the the video game 3D art. But still you were teaching other people how to make art at the time. You go over to your home, uh, your homeland, right? Now, let me, let me ask you a question because the product's there and you, you got as much as you could fit in the suitcase, maybe got another suitcase or something, but right. the products there were manufactured there, right? So it was a little cheaper than we would get in the U.S.? Yes, it's much cheaper. Yeah. It's much cheaper in Asia. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you came off and we said e-commerce in 2011, I'm thinking more like eBay, right? Yes. Was, was eBay the platform that you, you used? Yes. eBay was the only platform we used back then. Right. So now 2011, you're like, okay, let me try this thing. You're not thinking about a million dollar business. You're just trying to do something with your time away from, you know, while you're still searching and maybe trying new things and venturing off. When did it start becoming a real deal? Like, was it in the first year? How did you know that this is the avenue now? Forget 3D art, forget that industry. This is where I belong. Right. So first few years, I should have tried harder than I would be able to get, maybe get to the million dollar mark faster. Yeah. But in the first two years, I didn't consider e-commerce as my career because I only spent like maybe a couple hours per day to do this. Yeah. But I didn't thought it's a career, but... I think on the third year when I, uh, when the sales really starts to picking up because we start to sell on Amazon. Uh, so that's where the big deal coming from. So I, I realized, oh my God, so e-commerce can do this much from my garage. So I really start putting more time on it, invest in my own, uh, invest more time to study about how to, uh, how to, how to sell more, how to, how to get more products, how to do things better. And that's when I realized, okay, this is the real deal. Cause it's really, it's really a lot of money that I couldn't even imagine. And besides that, I really enjoy that. I don't have to commute two hours every day to go to work. So yes. I just totally think, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Entrepreneurship. Here's the thing. I'm going to do, do this for the rest of my life. Mm. Yeah. It's so funny how the different paths we take, is really like a stumble on, but it turned out to be our life's purpose, right? Because yeah. you're doing more than just e-commerce. It has turned into a coaching. It's turning into your passion, teaching and helping people do the same thing. And I'm sure when you're sitting in the office two hours away from your home, you had no idea that this would actually come about. What I'm interested in learning is because once you, you said a nugget for me, you started seeing that it's, it's picking up. So then you turned within and you started personally developing yourself on the business aspect and more on entrepreneurship, how to sell better, you know, the, the schematics of it. I love that idea. So you started turning within and developing yourself. What, what kind of things were you doing? Were you getting books and, and taking courses? Yes, back that uh, back then there wasn't any much material to talk about the e-commerce because it was still pretty new to everyone. Yeah, and well, school didn't teach teach us those. Actually, I tried to take some classes in uh, uh, the college, but they they don't have the classes I want. Yeah. So, <clears throat> reading book, reading book is the the most. I think that's mo the most effective way. Yeah. To study about that and also take online courses really crucial that's the, that's the cheapest and the fastest way to uh, to learn more knowledge if you uh, encounter certain problem let's say okay so okay for my mindset if I encounter any kind of uh, problem or challenge I, I need to encounter I will take online course for that so let's say I'm running a business okay encounter okay I noticed that okay I'm not really doing good on Facebook ad but how do I learn this I just buy an online course for the Facebook ad and study on that and implement that. And as I go through, maybe I encounter, okay, how do I do SEO? Okay, I didn't know that. I'll just buy an online course and study that and implement that. Either I myself will implement that or my system will do that. You know what? That's amazing. And that's exactly what more entrepreneurs, especially on startup level, you know, when you're a solopreneur and you're trying to do everything yourself, it's like, well, I know, you know, you can't stretch yourself too thin, but it's, you need the baseline. How can I get this information, this specific information? And you're right. The best ways are through online courses for that Facebook ads, for the SEO. I don't even hear too much about SEO anymore. <laughs> Yeah, just that was make, before. That was back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was just, I was just thinking about that today. So, Ellen, so j just bring us on a journey. Now you're like pumping. It's, it's three years in. Um, you're pumping. The sales are great. You're starting to say, "This is what I'm going to do." How does that, how does that look when you're transferring that now into a full blown business? It's four years. You've reached seven figures. First of all, 
congratulations on that. In that time frame, really, it's no time at all. Four years. I know you said that you could have done it a lot earlier, but even four years in business, it's really no time at all. Expecting what people say incomparably when it's 15 years is an overnight success. Four years is really no time at all. So how does this look? How do you feel? You know, and what's your new energy around entrepreneurship? Right. So I actually didn't think that much. Because <laughs> it came in phases, right? Yeah, it came in phases. I was like, oh, this business didn't really I'm so surprised. <laughs> and then, so starting from that point, I started to delegate a lot of uh, my tasks to my employees. And I got some spare time. So I thought, okay, I should be able to take this to another level because I'm getting too comfortable for e-commerce business. Because for e-commerce, you know, you could just sit in front of a computer and you don't really, uh, you don't really uh, talk to anyone in person yeah. <laughs> for the whole day. Yeah. So I thought, okay, here's, it's, it's a good time for me to do some change, maybe start a new business that allows me to stretch my comfort zone. Mm. I'm, I'm very, very introverted. I'm very bad at speaking. So... <laughs> it's really hard to imagine I'm, real, I'm, I'm doing this, uh, you're doing this interview with me because I thought, oh man, I couldn't speak. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, those are, that's, how it, that's how it naturally progresses. We actually go into the thing that scares us the most. Yes. Uh, same thing with me. It's like I created the comfort killers. I know it sounds scary and crazy, but as a way for me to continuously find ways and avenues to get uncomfortable, to stretch myself both in business and in my life. And those that are following this movement, following this way of life, and, you know, they're doing the same. They're finding those little things to stretch them. Now, I wouldn't think that you were introvert. I wouldn't think that even if, you, even if you solely are introvert and you're not picking this, why would you pick this? You know, why, you know there's other things that you could have done, uh, Ellen. <laughs> right, right, right. That's, that's a good point. Okay, let me tell you this because I thought when I started the business, the co this coaching business, I didn't think I have to talk to people a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, because so there was this time I thought about giving up because it doesn't fit my personality. Mm. Okay, this is so hard for me. Okay, me networking with people, talk to people every time, a lot of hours that just feels so exhausted. So I had this grace period. I had this, uh, 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 I had this period. I thought, okay, maybe if I just keep doing this for a couple months, I'll get used to it. So it actually took me six months for me to get used to it and become what I'm right now. So now I'm, I can just talk very comfortably with anyone. I can do interviews with anyone comfortably and even do the, I have a, a the Facebook live every Thursday, even though I know I don't speak English perfect, but I think that's, that's part of the, the practice and the exercise. I don't care if people laugh at me saying, okay, I cannot be successful if my English, they don't understand my English or anything. I'm trying, I'm trying very hard to stretch my comfort zone and trying to give out my message to people who want to know this message and want me to help them and want to become successful in e-commerce. Hey, that's powerful. Um, cause I know we're going to appreciate that because one thing I always say is, you know, we can wait till we can wait till we're perfect. That time is never going to happen. The practice gonna happen. Through, yeah, it's never going to, the practice through it, the, the lives every Thursday, the honing in on your skills, the experience of it all changes something. And mostly it changes the mindset right? It changes that we are so powerful that we can really do anything that we set our mind and heart to because our goal is to help people. Our goal is to serve people and expand more. One of your goals, and I read, I read them, um, the biggest one was uh, make an impact to the world. Yes. And, you know, with a huge goal like that, every morning you get up, you know, how do you go about doing this? How do I go about doing that? So I have daily affirmation I read oh. in the morning and, <laughs> and before I sleep. I, I have a list of goals I want to achieve and that making an impact to the world is one of them. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and as I go on, just woke up and uh, just start uh, hustling every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just, uh, just I think remember what 
we are why we're doing this is the most crucial part yeah so that's that's what keeps me going moving forward and keep stretching myself yeah and i know i see it here it says you know uh, that right now one uh, one another one of your goals is to become an international speaker yes which, you know i'm actually surprised it hasn't happened already ellen <laughs> You know, um, so what I what I like here, um, you're becoming a public figure. You're putting yourself out there. Um, you know, you're doing it already, and you're transitioning yourself into the expert. Well, you're already the expert, but teaching millions how to do the same. Is there a book in the works that you're gonna give to the universe? Yes, I am working on this book that's going to I uh, ho hopefully that's going to be published in a few months it's going to be available on amazon the book title is going to be how i how i made a million dollar business how i created a million dollar business with six hundred dollars well that's a very you know first of all it's catchy again the six hundred dollars um catches me because again and, and many people because sometimes it's that it's either hey you're gonna go blow this off anyway or you could go start a business. And I think, you know, when we have that with someone that did it and many people have done it, it we, we attract that. And we can actually help someone that might have blown $1,000 in a, in a Vegas weekend to really go and change their life and gain financial freedom. Yes. Tell me about time management because oh, yeah. uh, it's very important to me. You look well organized. I always look at the back of people's uh, place. The books are neatly stacked, Ellen. Uh -huh, you got your whiteboard there. Tell me what you do and what do you think of time management? Is it necessary? And uh, maybe give us a tip on how we could better manage our time, control our time in business. Right. Time management is the most crucial thing. <laughs> let me, yes. Yeah, let me remind you of this. So at the beginning, I have, uh, so I have two businesses. I have e-commerce business. I have this coaching business. I couldn't balance myself. I couldn't find a way to do the time management. But as time goes on, I finally figure out how to do this. Yeah. So I break down the time. Okay, I to, I, so I stay in my e-commerce office once, um, from Monday to Wednesday. I stay in there. And then from Thursday to Friday, I focus on my coaching business. So mm -hmm. I just split the time in half. And during those days, I control to only work from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So two business in 40 hours. How do I do that? Yes. yes. <laughs> I have also oh, Google Calendar is my best friend. I, mm. Whenever I have an appointment, I have to do something, I just throw in everything on my Google Calendar. I also use a lot of tools for people to book my time. Uh, Calendly? Yeah, use that. Yeah. I love I love Calendly. Yeah. So I, I'll get a notification on my on my phone and also uh, Apple Watch is a really good tool for you to keep your time managed because I don't, I, I'm not worrying now, but uh, on, on one of the uh, face on um, watch face, you will be able to see like, what's your next appointment? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I have that, um, you know, I'm all gadgety up too as well. Uh, but I always love to hear how other people are controlling their time and how, especially, you know, in your space. I mean, you have two businesses. Uh, both flourishing, both are, are doing great, and it needs your presence in both of them. So I'm happy that you're able to help us out, you know, and there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are just starting out that is kind of terrified, you know, they already got the kids to juggle the, the job, because a lot of people are doing it while they're still working, they're doing it in the overnight hours, and all of that. So, you know, you said something about affirmations and writing your goals down. Could you give us one of the affirmations that you're using currently? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to help as many. I want to use my uh, enthusiasm in e-commerce to help 1,000 and 10,000 people reaching financial freedom and time freedom. Wow. That's awesome. I'm going to replay this Comfort Killers. I hope you hear that. Maybe knock it out. I know it's, it's personal to you. Did you. Of course, you created those affirmations. The reason I'm... I love hearing that it's because I before our interview, I was just recording affirmations, which is a product that we're putting out is 21 affirmations, but uh, that's, it always, you know, ties with me. How is um, your spiritual balance with your business balance? 
Spiritual balance, I do meditation, and it really helps me because when you have a lot of tasks and a lot of stuff in mind, sometimes you can't just can't really get your thinking straight. Yeah. You, have, you need other people to remind you, okay, this is how you should do it. I'm like, oh my God, why am I? Ah. So I started doing meditation that allows me to think straight, thinking more clearly. That's yeah. a really good tool. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like you're, you're very spiritual. You're in tune to who you are on uh, your higher self. Uh, you're saying affirmations. You're, you're meditating. Uh, did you have any issues in business where... You know, it was more business than, than spiritual. How did you blend the two, though? Because I feel like, you know, at my point, you know, in, in growing the comfort killers, I'm highly spiritual, but then I got to go make 100 sales. Okay? So that, you know, I, got, I definitely have to do that. Well, it's time management again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I have, I have a tip to share. So basically just uh, – Schedule your day ahead. If you say you're going to do 30 minutes meditation just tomorrow at maybe 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., just write it down on your Google Calendar today. Yes. Yeah. So always be a day ahead, which, you know, I love doing. Always be a day ahead. I know some people that are a week ahead, which is freaking amazing. But a day ahead of the, you know, start scheduling your day ahead uh, the day before, which is which is awesome, uh, Tim. Yeah. Now let's get into the seven figure business. This is why people who are here, Ellen, people want to know how you did it. If they have 600 right now, the 600 in 2011 is probably a thousand now, right? <laughs> so with inflation and all that. So let's say we have a thousand dollars. We want to get into e-commerce. Amazon is the big powerhouse. Um, how do we go about maybe starting an e-commerce business should we just go on maybe etsy first what how does how do we try this out right so the first thing is to uh to find a product mm. there are tons of products you can source from alibaba.com so you you buy from the manufacturer directly that's why you can get really really good price mm -hmm. so after you buy them you have to ship to your house or amazon's where uh, warehouse directly and you uh, so, but for the first batch of product, I always recommend people to send it to your house uh, mm. so you can inspect and to see everything's good. Yeah, and you can send those products to the Amazon warehouse. Have Amazon to take care of the fulfillment and the packaging and all that for you, if you don't have time. Yeah, and if you want to sell, of course, I will also suggest you to sell on eBay, Etsy, and all that if you have the time to be sitting in your house and doing the uh, pick and pack and ship um, yeah. yourself. If you're a stay-at-home mom, it's ideally to do that. Yes. So I want to share my top top three marketplaces. Uh, Amazon, definitely number one. eBay, number two, is still really big. Yeah. Number three is Walmart. Which one is the last one? Walmart. Walmart. Walmart? Walmart. Yes. How, how do you, I mean, how do we give our stuff to Walmart to sell? They are, uh, this year, they are opening to public to trying to find more sellers because they are trying to compete against Amazon. Wow, never knew that. That is the megaton bomb. I stopped writing. I was like, wait, who? Walmart? It makes perfect sense, though. Um, they're, you know, Amazon's been dominating for a while, and a lot of these companies, a lot of these brands, I'm seeing them, I mean, top brands are closing their spaces, you know, yes. Macy's closing stores down and going out of business. So it makes perfect sense why Walmart would do this. And right now, Comfort Killers, you're hearing that on the front run this year, this is what they're doing. So it's, it's good to just jump ahead of the curve if this is something you're interested in e-commerce. Yes, this now, is the most, this is really update. This is really update information. Yeah, well, man, this is, I'm, I'm glad I have it first here, Ellen. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, e-commerce to me is always like, okay, we put the products out. How are these customers going to get there? There's tons of products, tons of stores on Amazon, tons of people doing the same thing. I know that's not the mindset to go into it because there's a product out there and there's always a buyer to, to, to buy your product. Money is everywhere. There's no scarcity. But how do we drive traffic? to this new place it's it's brand new spanking new we just used a thousand dollars we got our product we sourced it it's in our house it's in the kitchen we're picking packing how do we get customers 
Right. So the product selection is actually the most important thing mm. because it's if you if you pick like popular products, it will be um it will be really hard for you to show up in the first uh, first few pages of the Amazon search or of Walmart search. If you pick a niche products that don't have a lot of competitors, your products will automatically show up in the first few pages in the search. Mm. Have to do marketing, all the traffic is organic. And plus, Amazon and eBay already do the marketing for you, so you don't have to do the marketing. I love that. I mean, I never even looked at it like this. Well, first of all, send it to Amazon. Let them fulfill it, okay? Don't, you know, you don't have time for that. Your, your time should be consumed with, hey, what products? How am I going to get this niche product in my customer's hand and maybe drive some traffic? Now, you mentioned Facebook ads before. So obviously, yeah. you went through a course and you, you did that. Is that right now effective for e-commerce businesses? It is not very effective, but it's effective if, if you have a local store. Ah. Well, the best way the best way is to have a have a have a, a, a e-commerce warehouse and then have a storefront. Mm. Combine those two together. So that's where really we're seeing a lot of the magic happen is when you have the storefront, which is great because there's a lot of these mom and pop shops, a lot of these storefront that kind of was out the loop digitally. And now you see the, the reemergence of them through Google and, and Facebook, which I'm appreciative of because, you know, the Walmart gets in the center of the town and then there goes the mom and pops running away. But really they have an advantage because they're, they're, face, they're, they're customer facing as well as they could do the back end. Right, right. So you, they should um, use that space for both, uh, both business model, both offline and online. What do you think about Instagram? Instagram is still effective, really effective. Well, it's good. It doesn't really convert well because it doesn't have a clickable link. But it's great to get your uh, brand out there. It's getting more ex uh, branding exposure. Awesome. And your ideal, uh, you see, guys, if you want to get coached by someone that's done this, I mean, this is what I love. And uh, in what I loved, what Ellen said was that when she wanted to find out more information about a specific thing, she went right to the source. If it's Facebook ads, you're going to get a course on that. If it's, if it's an e-commerce business that you're trying to grow into a seven figure business, you come see Ellen, right? Ellen. Yes, exactly. Where could they find you? Uh, they can go to ellenpro.com, E-L-L-E-N-P-R-O.com. And there's going to be a section uh, that says, uh, come join our free webinar. So just click on that. And then I have a two-hour free training session wow. about how to, how to uh, start your e-commerce business from scratch. And I'll talk about what to do and what not to do in today's e-commerce. That is awesome because right, right away you're getting value up front. And that's what I love about it. Two hours of uh, uh, training on a webinar is awesome. Value yeah. up front. Ellen, it's been such a pleasure. I know that there's always a burning thing uh, that people want to say. Maybe I skipped. Maybe I forgot to mention. Is there something you want to tell our audience? Well, if you want to start a business, make sure you make big mm. otherwise otherwise don't do it yeah <laughs> no no no. that makes sense make it yeah. big or don't do it St shut yeah. up with these small ass goals now let's i mean let's get real ellen you know yeah. when sometimes i'm hearing a tiny goal i'm like throw this piece of paper out and get with it so make it big or else don't even do it right is that your quote can i put yeah, that's my mindset oh i love it i love it yeah. i'm gonna definitely put that quote in there now uh, we know where we can find you. We know what you do. Um, becoming a public figure, you already are one, Ellen. You are definitely one. I look up to you. The Comfort Killers community looks up to you. We can't wait to get this energy out to the universe because when we hear e-commerce, we're also in the back of our head, our antiquated ways. We're like, you know, that seems 2008. It seems eBay. It seems old. But because everyone's more like, Where's the click funnel? Where's the click funnel? They don't even use e-commerce anymore, but really it's a, it's an industry that is thriving. So I'm happy to have you as the forefront of the knowledge and the wisdom to teach our comfort killers, to show and experience with our comfort killers, how you did it. 
And we're going to be directing traffic. Anyone that wants more information, again, you know where to find her, ellenpro.com. Sign up to the webinar. Ellen, I appreciate you being with us today. And I just want to say this because I say it all the time. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you a comfort killer? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. When I get to LA, we definitely have to get together and talk more. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, comfort killers. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name, baby.